out of home and they will never see their parents again on the streets. Well, they go and then from there, another. And those children that stood like that today, in spite of the Child Rights Act, it is not being criminalized. The culture of sending people out onto the street so that they become wild over time. They have nothing to live for, so they have everything to die for. Well, it goes back to talking. Well, Jitio Gunye, a legal practitioner, many thanks for coming on Sunrise Daily. Well, another moment, we'll be back to look at another perspective on the same issue. Do you understand? Mr. Accountant, I can see we have four more people on our staff list. Do you have the slightest idea how much this is going to cost me? Not a couple, sir. Do you think I'm joking here? No, sir. So, who is going to pay them? GIS will. GIS? Yes. Graduate Internship Scheme. Please, sir. Tell me more about it. Yes, it's another innovative way the federal government seeks to empower youth and women by getting them jobs and skills they need to make a living. Private and public organizations will mentor graduates for a period of one year. Interns will be paid by the federal government through the GIS program. Interested companies and organizations should check the GIS website for more information. Shopee, graduate internship scheme brought to you by Shopee and implemented by the Federal Ministry of Finance. Another luxury. The new luxury comes into the world. Experience new luxury. Kia Quaris. John Oloide, a lawyer, joins us uh, also to look at the sentencing of Henry Oka. Good to have you join us this morning. Good morning. Uh, but uh, I'm quite sure you must have had a whole lot of uh, lawyers speaking up, uh, Kiamu, and of course, uh, just uh, earlier on, Jiji uh, Ogunye, mm. he spoke on the same matter. Uh, is it uh, truly travesty of justice has been described by some lawyers? No, I don't, I don't agree with those who describe what has happened in the South African court as a travesty of justice. In fact, that's what justice should be like. The fact that um, our, our standard in Nigeria is warped does not mean we should expect other countries to, to tow our line. Um, uh, GT said something here that, you see, justice delayed is justice denied. More often than not in Nigeria, the situation on ground is you have a criminal matter that is supposed to be had expeditiously, being adjourned um, forever. Frivolous applications, frivolous uh, appeals being visited on the courts. I mean, there's next to nothing a court can do because the court is supposed to hear everything that is thrown at it. Here in Nigeria, whether you call it strategy or stupidity, I don't know. You see a situation where the, the hands of the judges are tied because lawyers, m more often than not, just decide that a case should not be had to conclusion. The, the client, the accused person, thinks the, the lawyers are doing a good job by postponing the doomsday. But what has happened in the South African court is that the case has been had expeditiously. There are opportunities for either party to appeal. It means the way things are at the appellate courts, I don't know how many levels they have, they can't spend more than a year or so before Oka actually knows his fate. He will know in time whether he's going to spend the time or he's not going to spend the time. So I don't appreciate where those who are saying this is travesty of justice. I don't know where they're coming from. Well, let's look at the background leading up to this particular okay. case. Uh, uh, Judiciary Correspondent Shalat uh, did something uh, on it. 
It was in October 2010 that a deadly terror attack in Abuja, Nigeria's federal capital territory, claimed about 12 lives and left another 37 persons injured. Two and a half years after that deadly terror attack, dubbed the Independence Day bombing, the mastermind Henry Oka has now been sentenced for that offense by a South African court. Oka, born in 1965, came into the spotlight as a key leader of the movement for the emancipation of the Niger Delta MEND, one of the armed groups involved in the struggle for resource control in the region. The fourth son of a naval officer, Oka was said to be enraged by the living conditions of the Niger Delta people and subsequently used his experience as a gun salesman to further his self-chosen career as a rebel leader. It will be recalled that MEND, which started its activities in 2006, has claimed responsibility for several attacks on all companies operating in the Niger Delta, often through the use of sabotage, guerrilla warfare or kidnapping of foreign oil workers. According to the group, their main goal is to destabilize the foreign oil interests in the Niger Delta, who they claim have been exploiting the local populace. Oka organized and funded rebel groups, and at a point he relocated to South Africa where he continued with his armed struggle. He was there till he was arrested for the Independence Day bombing in 2010, an offense for which men again claimed responsibility. Even though the alleged crimes occurred on Nigeria's soil and there is an extradition treaty between both countries, the Nigerian government refused to seek its extradition. With this sentence, Nigeria's history would record Henry Oka as the first Niger Delta militant leader to be convicted on charges of terrorism. Shola Shieli, Channels Television News. All right, before we look at some of the other issues, let's talk about uh, the extradition treaty between Nigeria and South Africa. Uh, now that he's uh, to spend time in jail, they haven't appealed yet. Can the government also move in and say, well, let's have him spend time here? Well, on motives of expediency, anything can happen in Nigeria. I, I mean, the backdrop is this. I remember correctly, if my memory serves me right, that when the Abuja bombing occurred, the initial reaction of Mr. President was to say, forget what men says, men is not involved in this bombing, if I remember correctly. Now, since the sentencing, nothing has been heard from the Nigerian government. No comments from anybody, the chief law officer, the spokespersons. I, I venture to think that the position of the government is just to maintain studied silence never to get involved, because it's actually embarrassing for the head of a state to make a comment that has now been totally negated by the judiciary of an, uh, an entirely different country. It will be out of place, in my own thinking, for the same government to now say, oh, extradite the man here after sentencing. This was the same person who faced charges in a Nigerian court and subsequently, before conviction or whatever, amnesty was granted. Now, what would be the basis for asking for the extradition after sentencing? And when he has not even exhausted all his um, options by way of appeal? Mm. The appeal we talked about, uh, sorry, Malpe asked a question yesterday. Uh, she posed a question to Professor Skiamo asking if it's possible uh, that uh, those weaknesses that uh, well, were denied uh, to come testify on his behalf for will be allowed this time, but uh, he says, no, well, you can't do that in appeal. But for G.T. Uh, Ogunye, he says it looks like uh, in some cases uh, it can be allowed. Oh, yes. I mean, you, you, the, 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 I mean the, law, the law is made for men, not men for laws. It doesn't mean because you've never had an opportunity to present your case at the, at the lower court. The appeal court, for all times and for all purposes, will shut you out. There are, on rare occasions, I mean, that's an exception to the general rule, if you can confirm that while the trial was ongoing, this piece or pieces of evidence were already available, but for whatever reason, they could not be produced. Yes, ordinarily, the court, the, the court of appeal is, is a court that depends on the record of the lower court. It's not supposed to, it's not a court of first instance where the court will listen to witnesses and all that. But in so far as it relates to, I mean, except in constitutional matters where the Court of Appeal can then act as a court of first instance. 
But in so far as it relates to documentary evidence, evidence that is already there, that had always been in existence, I mean, you can apply to the Court of Appeal with 